we we were already happy as we were, but decided that um, once we'd got married that we wanted children together as well. So um, we decided to to try for another baby, and um, we got two. We did. Hooray! So Harris and Alex were 17 months. Through the night, um, actually, um, Harrison had been a little bit under the weather, a bit of a bit of a snotty and a bit of a cold. Um, so we'd been up through the night and we'd lifted Harrison in with us to give, you know, so, so as not to disturb Alexander. So I got ready as normal and I'd left the door shut into the boys' bedroom so as not to disturb Alex. Um, as I was going to take Harry downstairs, I decided to go in and, and get him. And I pushed the door open and it, the door used to catch on the carpet, which used to immediately wake them both up. And, and he, he never moved, which was unusual anyway. But the atmosphere in the bedroom immediately told me that something was, was wrong. Um, and as I looked to the cot, he was lifeless. So I was ringing an ambulance and then um, following the, the um, ambulance dispatcher's uh, CPR instructions. And then it all becomes a bit of a, a blur really stuff happens without you even realizing it's happened people arrive in the house and i don't i don't know how they got in at that point then the the crew came came down the stairs and and i think alex was wrapped in a blanket and as i watched them walk out the door the only thing I, the last thing i saw of him leaving the house was his was his leg wrapped up with this this stranger and and they left with him so we got to the hospital, as Nicola was already ready for, and I realised quite quickly, sadly, there was nothing else that they could do for Alexander. Um, and he'd gone. Lots of people have heard of SIDS or cot death and are aware that uh, small children and infants may die suddenly and unexpectedly, but around a quarter of all of the sudden and unexpected deaths in children actually affect children who are older than one year of age, and there's really very little research that's gone on in that group. The aim of this project is to uh, really use our large database of cases from Great Ormond Street Hospital to understand that group, to go into a lot of detail about what was found at the time of post-mortem examination, and in particular in the cases where uh, no cause of death is apparent, to define that group so that for future studies we can then go on and do new approaches, for example genetic testing or other new tests that may come online, uh, to try and reduce the number of unexplained cases. The worst thing to happen to anybody and to be left in the dark completely with no avenue to explore, um, that's why the research is important that no baby should die at all ever without, you know, with, with no cause and no parent, no family should have to see on that death certificate reason unexplained or open case. It's not an answer. That doesn't tell me why my child died. Research costs money. That's the, the sad fact that without money you can't do any research. People need paying to look at these figures. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to raise some money. I think the important part for us is that any, any monies that go direct to the Lullaby Trust, you know, there's a very good chance it's going to go direct to research. You know, which one day will save somebody's life.